And we are live here at Faith and Victory Church's Annex, as I call it. This is our studio here at Word of Faith Ministries, but for tonight, it will be the Faith and Victory Church Annex. <laughs> anyway, it is Wednesday night. I laugh because last night I started the live stream thinking it was Wednesday night, but it wasn't. It was Tuesday. And so uh, several folks kind of let me know, hey, Dr. Bill, you're, you're a little early. <laughs> what can I say? I'm just excited to share the word with you. And so uh, you just have to forgive me for that. I, you know, hallelujah. It's been a busy week, busy week and a half or so. Uh, Belinda is out of the hospital. She is home. Uh, she's in the living room right now listening to to us here. And uh, I appreciate all you guys' prayers and uh, well wishes and support uh, during this time. Uh, it's been a real blessing, and we really, really appreciate it sincerely. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, it has caused <laughs> some interesting confusion in terms of timing because we just lost track of time with everything that's been going on. But uh, praise the Lord, we're here. <laughs> we're live. <laughs> we're ready to go. Amen. All righty. Uh, we want to talk about the power and influence of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life. We're going to continue with our study in that regard. Uh, I have been teaching on that on the, uh, the radio program that I do, the uh, Speak Faith broadcast, and I've uh, been teaching on it there. also been teaching this month here on the Wednesday night Bible study messages, and uh, there's just been several sessions, and the thing is we, we're a little bit out of sync a little bit in the teaching in terms of if you're listening to all those sources, so bear with me. <laughs> We're going to get caught up a little bit tonight uh, from Acts chapter 14. So go ahead and get your Bibles and get them ready at Acts chapter 14, and we'll continue with that study. Before we do that, though, I want to mention that uh, we do still have the building fund going on, fvc.org slash building. Now, we have... Uh, uh, been able to raise quite a bit of money toward that, but we still have not located the perfect building yet. It's out there. Amen. And it's it's waiting on us. And I believe that the Lord has it reserved for us. Amen. And so in the meantime, we don't know what building that is. We don't know, you know, financially what it's going to require, per se. Uh, but we have a sizable amount toward it already. But if you want to get in on that particular miracle, you can sow into this good ground. Amen? And so go to fec.org slash building and find out more about that opportunity. Now, we also have uh, tonight's uh, offering available to give to our regular operating budget here at Faith and Victory Church. And so if you'd like to contribute in that offering... Uh, then you can do so either with a Square Cash app, which is an app that you can download off of the uh, Google Play Store if you use Android, or the iTunes App Store uh, if you use an iPhone. Uh, so either platform has the Square Cash app available. It's free to download that app. Once you download it, then point it to Dollar Faith Victory Church, as it says there on the screen, and uh, you'll be able to contribute that way. Also, you can use PayPal, donations at fvc.org, or you can go to the website, fvc.org, and there's a uh, button there that you can click on and contribute, still through PayPal, uh, but it is you know just convenient there, the easy button, we like to call it, there on the website. So either way, you can get in on uh, giving to, into this offering tonight. So let's open in prayer and believe for that offering to be abundantly blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to come together tonight and receive from your word, receive from the teaching that flows through your word and through the Holy Spirit's 
prompting and teaching. And so, Father, we're ready for that. We're excited about that. Now, as the people give and tithe to Faith and Victory Church and support the outreach of the ministry, Father, I just believe they will receive abundant blessing for their giving. They are tithers, they are givers, and because of that, they have the tithers and the giver's blessing. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I do want to mention one other thing before we get going, and that is our email address, office at fbc.org. If you need to contact us in any way about whatever uh, that has to do with the ministry or you have a particular uh, question or anything like that about what we talk about, you can send us a message at office at fbc.org. And I wanted to remember to share that with you. Praise the Lord. All right, let's open our Bibles now to Acts chapter 14. I have my e-sword up here on my screen. And we're going to go through this. Now, in talking about the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life, what better opportunity uh, should we take advantage of than to go look at the operation of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life? that were at that local, uh, or, or the early church days, we have recorded history of how the Holy Spirit moved. And I like what I heard somebody say a long time ago, you know, uh, Acts is called the Acts of the Apostles, okay. Uh, but really, it's the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles, amen? Uh, the Holy Spirit moving and operating, and that's what we're really looking at, is how the Holy Spirit moves, operates the administration of spiritual gifts, the administration of miracles, signs, and wonders through the local church and through the believers that are on the earth. And the thing about it is, you read the book of Acts, and people just go, wow, man, isn't it amazing what happened during the book of Acts? Well, we're still in the book of Acts. You know, the book of Acts didn't just... Uh, close and say, well, that's it, guys. We're out of here. <laughs> you know, No, the book of Acts doesn't really end. If you read it and you're just reading along in the text, it just er abruptly stops. You know, it's like the narrative just is paused. <laughs> and so that the reason for that is we're still writing the book of Acts. It's still going on. And somewhere in heaven, they're, you know, they're writing it down. Now, I don't think, you know, there's angels up there with ink pens writing it out like we used to talk about back in the early days in the Baptist church. No, I think there are very sophisticated recorders <laughs> that are recording it. And, you know, God's got technology we have no idea about. Spiritual technology. Amen. And so, praise the Lord. Either way, it's being recorded. And we're still writing the book of Acts. And so, we should be expecting things such as what occurred in the book of Acts happening today. So let's look at it here. Acts chapter 14, verse 1. Now it happened in Iconium, this is a city here, that they went together at uh, to the synagogue of the Jews and so spoke, that, uh, so spoke that a great multitude both of Jews and Greeks believed. Now you know the Jews were not happy about this, that the apostles were speaking, they were teaching about Jesus, and a whole bunch of folks were believing. So what happened? Verse 2, But the unbelieving Jews, in other words, Jews who didn't believe in Jesus, see what I mean there? The unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brethren. Now, in other words, they had a, they had a gossip campaign, whispering campaign going on. You know, what, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? You know, it's just, I don't like this teaching. And they had this undercurrent, kind of, you know, murmuring and so forth. And see, this is what causes problems in churches today. Are people that sit back and they're, they're unbelieving, <laughs> and they don't believe in the message. I don't even know why they bother going to church, you know. I mean, they're just there to stir things up. Emissaries of the devil. <laughs> well, they poison the minds of people against the brethren, against the message. And that's what was happening here. Therefore, they stayed there a long time. Now, notice what they did. 
the the apostles stayed there a long time because they had a lot a lot of mess to undo through teaching the word speaking boldly in the lord who was bearing witness to the word of his grace granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands and we've talked about this before just kind of giving a little recap here and that is mark chapter 16 says that the lord confirms the word that is preached with signs following so that's what was happening here as they bear witness of the word of his grace as they taught the word signs and wonders were done by their hands now the signs and wonders were done by their hands in other words at their laying hands on the sick and they people were recovering just like it says in mark chapter 16 but it's clear from what we're going to read here it wasn't due to them being apostles. It wasn't due to them being special people. No, they were clear that it was the moving of the Holy Spirit, the moving of God. They were just vessels. Same thing today. You know, may not be called as an apostle, but you got hands. <laughs> you can lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. If you read Mark chapter 16, the qualifier there is not being an apostle. The qualifier there is those that believe. Are you one of those that believe? I am. <laughs> well, that means I can lay my hands on the sick, and I believe they will recover. Oh, but Dr. Bill, what if they don't? That's not my job. <laughs> I don't have to be concerned about that. I'm not the one healing them. God's the one healing them. God's the one who honors his word that's preached. All I got to do is be faithful to preach the word, be faithful to take these hands and put them on those folks that are there that have faith to be healed, and the Lord does the work. Amen? It has nothing to do with me. You know, praise the Lord. I, I'm available. You should be available. All of us should be available. But the thing about it is, it's the Lord that does the work. It says here, they spoke boldly in the Lord who was, in other words, the Lord was, bearing witness to the word of his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. There's a partnership going on here between man and God. There's a Godward side, and there's a manward side. Okay? And it's us being obedient that allows this to happen here in the earth. Verse 4, But the multitude of the city was divided, part sided with the Jews, those were those unbelieving Jews, and part with the apostles. And when a violent attempt was made by both the Gentiles and Jews with their rulers to abuse and stone them, they became aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia. In other words, this is a region, Lyconia. These were two cities that they fled to, to the surrounding region, and they preached the gospel there. Wherever they went, they were preaching the gospel. Well, I take that to mean that wherever we go, we should be preaching the gospel. You may say, well, yeah, but I'm not a preacher, Dr. Bill. Well, that's okay. The Word of God says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, you are a minister of reconciliation. Now, that doesn't mean you're in the five-fold ministry, okay? You know, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. You may not be in the five-fold ministry, but we're all called to be ministers of reconciliation. And very simply that is telling folks that God has through Jesus Christ and his work reconciled the world to himself if I if little word with a lot of meaning if they receive the free gift of what Jesus has done in other words God's already done all the work Jesus has already done all the work but it's up to people to receive when they hear the word of God. Romans 10, 17, Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Well, when you say what the word of God says, that gives them, or uh, uh, is, is uh, uh, they're moved upon by the Lord and by the Holy Spirit, and they get faith to receive. You see what I'm saying? In other words, that's the, the impetus for it is preaching the gospel. And again, not necessarily the fivefold ministry. Now, obviously, the fivefold ministry does that. I mean, particularly the evangelist ministry, that's 
a lot of their whole purpose is to minister uh, about salvation, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, healing. If you look at the ministry of the evangelist in the New Testament, you'll see that signs, wonders, and miracles is part of their ministry. But anyway, that's a whole other study we could get into, but we, we will start it, we'll stay on track here. All right, uh, let's look at verse 8. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb. Now, how long had he been crippled? From his mother's womb. That would be his entire life on the earth. Amen? He was crippled. He had never walked. How often had he walked? He never walked. Okay, I want you to see this. We're not talking about he sprained his ankle. He had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul, observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed. Now, let's stop right there. Paul saw that he had faith to be healed. How did Paul see that he had faith to be healed? Did a little neon sign light up on his forehead? I've got faith to be healed. No. Amen. Did some, some light bulb appear over his head? No. Paul was operating in the spiritual gift of the word of knowledge. A word of knowledge is a part, or a, that's where the word comes in. In other words, not the whole thing, but a word. A part of knowledge supernaturally given about the present, you know, what, what is going on, or the past in terms of time, okay? Word of wisdom is concerning future events, what is going to happen, all right? So this is word of knowledge. He had a word of knowledge. This guy has faith to be healed. That's how he knew. So the spiritual gifts are in operation right now as we're reading this. And he, as he saw this, he said, I, I, he saw that he had faith to be healed. So he said in a loud voice, Paul said in a loud voice, stand up straight on your feet. Now, if you can imagine this guy is sitting there I mean, you know, yeah, he's got faith to be healed, but he's not healed. Brother Hagin likes to point this out in his teaching concerning this. He said, you know, if this guy had faith to be healed, why wasn't he healed? He hadn't acted on his faith. Brother Hagin talked about keep the switch of faith turned on. <laughs> and you've got to act on your faith. You've got to use your faith. You've got to take it. I like what uh, I heard Glory Copeland say one time. You've got to reach out and take it. That's actually the meaning of the word receive. Reach out and take it. So he wasn't doing that. He had not released his faith. Brother Hagin talks about let your faith loose. <laughs> well, you got to let your faith loose. You got to activate it. Amen? And that's what he hadn't done. He was sitting there, had faith to be healed. But he wasn't healed. So what happened? Well, Paul shouted out in a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. Wow! That got his attention. And he leaped and walked. He acted on his faith. He had to <laughs> get ready, leap and walk. You know what I'm saying? He, he had action. Now, when he leaped and walked, when the people saw what Paul had done, they raised their voices, saying in the Lyconian language, the gods have come down in the likeness of men. In other words, they thought that it was through their power, Paul and Barnabas' power, that they these uh, this guy had received his healing. They were giving credit to them. And they said, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. And Barnabas, they called Zeus, and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. Now, I kind of think of it this way. Now, you know, this is not, you can't teach this as doctrine. This is just my opinion. I think that, uh, you know, when Paul was preaching here and they were out there in the crowd, that they were talking among themselves, Paul's still preaching. And they're speaking in their own language. And I don't know if he spoke that language. probably did. He was a very educated man. But either way, he'd have been preaching, okay? And so he did, probably didn't know immediately what they were saying, is my point, all right? 
But when he heard, when he understood what they were actually saying among themselves, he said, men, why are you doing these things? I can just imagine him just stopping. And, what are you guys talking about? What are you guys doing? See what I'm saying? Got to imagine it that way in your mind's eye. And, and that's just the way I look at it. Now, you, you can believe what you want to about it. That's just me. I think that, you know, initially he didn't know what they were saying, and then he did suddenly see what was going on, and he got a little uh, put out. And so, uh, this is what went on here. It says, uh, let's see, Barnabas calls Zeus. And the, okay, in verse 13, Then the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in the front of the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, intending to sacrifice with the multitudes. Well, <laughs> that got their attention. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard this, heard what they were about to do, they tore their clothes. Now, that was something they did in those days to demonstrate, you know, great concern and uh, being upset. We don't go around tearing our clothes today to illustrate that. That was just a, you might say, a custom of the day. They tore their clothes and ran in among the multitude, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men with the same nature as you. All right? That's the point I was trying to get to here. In other words, we're not special. Yeah, okay, we're ministers of the gospel, but we're just men. We're natural men. We're men just like you are, same nature as you. And we preach to you that you should turn from these useless things. I'm reading out the New King James Version here. You should turn from these useless things to the living God, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all things that are in them. In other words, instead of worshiping all this mess that you're talking about, you ought to be worshiping the true God, worshiping the true God, because he made all this stuff. And who in bygone generations allowed all nations to walk in their own ways? Nevertheless, he did not leave himself without witness. In that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, they could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them. Even though they said, wait a minute, it's not us. Wait a minute, we're not special. We're not gods come down. We're men just like you are. We're just here to deliver the message. They could scarcely restrain the multitudes from sacrificing to them. Man. Now what went on here? Verse 19. Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul. That whispering campaign that was going on? It was taking root. Now, let me meddle just a minute here. <laughs> if you're in church and you're speaking against those that are in authority and you got a whispering campaign going, that is just wrong. Flat out wrong. That is causing strife. And believe me, you do not want to cause strife among the brethren. Okay, or anyone, actually. Because the devil is the author of strife and confusion. All right, so guess who that means you're working for? <laughs> Uh-oh, that's right, the devil. So you don't want to be doing that. No, you don't have the right to criticize and fuss and throw a fit, spread all kinds of you know, rumors and gossip and everything else about what you think's going on in church, probably completely and totally wrong in all areas, but you're bound and determined to do it anyway. Now, when I say you, I'm not talking to you, bless your darling heart. I'm talking to them <laughs> that are out there that do it. You know who you are, <laughs> okay? So the thing is, don't do it. You're siding in with the devil. You're siding in with confusion. You're sowing discord among the brethren, and that's not something you want to be doing. Now, they were doing this. They, were, they had a whispering campaign going, remember. And because of that, they, the crowd was stirred up to stone Paul. 
the messenger that had come to deliver the word of God. Now, these folks knew about stoning. They were experts at it, okay? And they weren't just chucking a few little old rocks at them. They were dropping boulders on Paul. He was stoned, and I believe he was killed. Stone cold dead, all right? A little play on words there, stone cold dead, okay. Anyway, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city. Now, if they stone him and, and he's a bloody pulp and they drag him outside the city, it says in the New King James, supposing him to be dead, there's another translation that says, they were assured he was dead. They thought he was dead. There's all kinds of ways this is translated. The bottom line is they knew dead. They knew stoning. And I believe he was dead. And I actually believe that, now this is just me again, this is just, this is just me, what I believe from what I've read and what I've studied, all right? I'm not preaching this as doctrine either. But I just happen to believe that this is where Paul went up to the third heaven and talked to the Lord and got some information of, that he preached to the church. You know, got the, uh, uh, the Pauline revelation. Came at the point that he was stoned here. He, his spirit went to heaven, I believe. But then he was, he was returned, he came back, and began to preach. And let's look at what happened here. They stoned Paul, dragged him out of the city, supposed, believed that he was dead. I think he was. However, <laughs> verse 20, however, don't you love howevers? Amen. God's got a plan here. However, when the disciples gathered around him, Woo, hallelujah. We could preach a message right there. The disciples, his company, gathered around him. Do you think they were just gawking? No, they were praying. They were believing God. They were saying, Lord, raise this man up. Amen. That doesn't report that here. But I know, I know what Holy Ghost-filled brethren do. Been there. Been one for quite a few years. Since 1973. November 10th, 1973, when I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Spoke in other tongues. At a full gospel business con men's convention. Amen. Happy hunters were teaching. George Otis was teaching. And they shared on the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Spoke in other tongues. Well, every meeting I went to is a good charismatic... First chance you got to lay hands on the sick, you were laying hands on the sick. You were shouting, you were commanding, you were binding, you were loosing. I mean, you know, whoo, hallelujah, we got after it. You know what I mean? So that's what these guys were doing. They were just standing around going, oh, Paul's been stoned, what are we going to do? No, they were, they were taking authority. They were using the name of Jesus. They were pleading the blood. I mean, they were just, they were going after it. So what happens here? However, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up. Paul was dead. They believed he was dead. They saw he was dead. But he rose up and went into the city. Now, <laughs> he didn't raise up and, oh man, I'm just, I can barely make it. And they drug him off. No, he went into the city on his own two feet. He went into the city. He was raised up supernaturally. Now, I believe when he came up, he had the Pauline revelation. That's just, that's me. That's what I believe. But the disciples gathered around him. He rose up. He went into the city. And the next day, so in other words, he didn't lay around and recuperate for three months. The next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Wow. I want you to think about that. Guys, as I said, stone cold dead. And then the next day, he's traveling, preaching the gospel. I like that. Well, this is the power and the influence of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life, in Paul's life. Now, don't cut short. Don't diminish what God can do in your life. Amen. 
Boy, we can sit there and preach for a while. I, we'll move on. We'll move on. All right. The Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, having persuaded the multitude to stone Paul. Now, he gets up, and let's look at verse 21. When they had preached the gospel in that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them. Now, I want you to listen closely to this exhorting them to continue in the faith. Continuing in the faith is becoming a disciple, a disciplined believer. In other words, it's not just get born again, get your ticket punched. Okay, I'm I'm good. I'm ready to go to heaven. I'll just get on back to my regular life and move on. No, you continue in the word. You become a disciple indeed. Okay? So he exhorted them to continue in the word, saying, We must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Now, let me read that out of the message translation. I kind of like the way that reads. Uh, you know, I don't always recommend the message translation. Uh, but it is it gives you a, a flavor that maybe you wouldn't get through a regular text. I think it's more of a paraphrase. But the reading here is interesting, the way it says it. Let's start verse 21 and read it out of the message. After proclaiming the message in Derby and establishing a strong corps of disciples, they retraced their steps to Lystra and Iconium, then Antioch, putting muscle and sinew in the lives of the disciples. Woo! In other words, they did some work in teaching them urging them to stick with what they'd begun to believe and not quit. Stick with it and don't quit. Making it clear to them that it wouldn't be easy. Now see, this is this is good. I, I like this because too many folk today have this idea that the message of the gospel is just easy greasy grace. You know, we just got it made. We can do anything we want to do. We can say anything we want to say. We don't have to tithe. We don't have to give. We don't have to go to church. We don't have to do nothing. But we just, we're just we just covered by grace, and it's sloppy grace. Well, I praise God for grace. Don't get me wrong. I love grace, and I love good grace teaching. But grace is an empowerment to do what the Word of God says you're to do. Not to sin and then say, well, I'm covered with grace. No. Paul himself said, should we sin that grace abounds? And then he said, God forbid. He made that very clear. Okay? Don't get me started. All right. He says, anyone signing up for the kingdom of God has to go through plenty of hard times. This is not a popular message today is my point. Okay, in these greasy grace days, people don't want to hear that the preacher is saying and making it clear to them that it wouldn't be easy that signing up for the kingdom of God, you're going to go through plenty of hard times. Yeah, but Dr. Bill, I thought we had the victory. We do. I thought we overcome in the Lord. We do. But you know, overcoming means you are applying yourself in battle. You don't just sit back and go, yeah, praise the Lord, I'm okay. Well, yeah, we're going to win, but you got to apply yourself. you got to put the muscle and sinew into it. Amen? This is not some greasy grace just float on by thing. Brother Hagin used to say all the time, we're not laying back on flowery beds of ease. You know, it doesn't fall on you like ripe apples off a tree. No. You're going to have to knuckle down, believe God, stand for the word, continue in the word, and there's going to be times that it will be hard because there will be opposition. Now, they had to deal with people stoning them. We hadn't got there yet. I'm not saying we won't. <laughs> we hadn't got there yet. But the thing about it is, when we do, we overcome like Paul did. He got up and walked out, went to the next city, kept on a preaching, shook the dust off and went on. Then it goes on to say in verse 23, Paul and Barnabas handpicked leaders in each church 
After praying, their prayers intensified by fasting. They presented these new leaders to the master to whom they had entrusted their lives. Woo, hallelujah. They were setting up churches right and left wherever they went. And I tell you what, praise the Lord, we are the church, the overcoming church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's presenting us ultimately in these last and last days as a church not having spot nor wrinkle. Well, there's some folks going to have to work on the spots and the wrinkles <laughs> because they need to put some muscle and sinew into it, spiritually speaking. You're going to have to get some sin out of your life. Got to do some repenting. Yes, I said repent. That's another term people don't want to hear these days is repentance. I like to stay repented. Amen? If I have anything that is not of faith, the Word of God says whatever is not of faith is sin. Well, guess what? I am quick to confess sin. If I do something that's not of faith, then I confess it is sin and I move on. Amen? Keep yourself under the spout where the glory comes out. Hallelujah. Keep your fellowship close with the Lord. Keep that pipe clean. I like to use that illustration. It's like you got a pipe and it can get clogged up with all kinds of unbelief and junk. So clear that pipe out. Get the fellowship between you and the Lord clean and clear. First Peter, uh, excuse me, First Peter, uh, First John, chapter one talks about that we confess our sin. That God is faithful and just. Got a gnat flying there. God is faithful and just to cleanse us of our sin. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Unrighteousness is, if righteousness is being right before the Lord, having right position before the Lord, unrighteousness is something that is between you and the Lord that keeps you out of that right position. Amen? And if you are saying something that is not a faith, if you're acting in such a way that it's not a faith, that is sin, and it will get in the way of that fellowship. Now, you're still born again. You're still going to heaven. Amen. But the fellowship, the pipe needs to be cleared. Amen. I like that. That's just kind of the way I express it, because we got to have those pipes clear for the glory and the blessing and the anointing to flow through. Now, again, I'm not saying you get unborn again. I'm not saying you got to get reborn again. No, you're born again. You're going to heaven. I'm talking about ministry. I'm talking about fellowship. I'm talking about walking out a life of faith before the Lord and doing it in the righteousness of God that is in Christ Jesus. It doesn't come from your righteousness. It doesn't come from your actions. It doesn't come from anything you do or don't do. But there are things that can get between you and the Lord that break the flow, stop up the pipe. So get that pipe clear. Amen. That's all we're saying there. But as he left each city, he would appoint these leaders... And I love the fact there that it says, in whom they had entrusted their lives. We can rely on the brethren. That's one reason that I, you know, appreciate all the folks that have prayed and believed for Belinda's healing and recovery. And she's doing well. So like I said, she's here with us right now with me, right, right now here in the condo. And, and is doing well, getting stronger every day, confessing the word of God, that the Lord is the strength of our life. That's my confession every day. And she's... See, so that's, that's now her confession every day. The Lord is the strength of our life. Amen. And so that builds us up. It strengthens us. It puts us in a position physically, mentally, and spiritually to be available for the work of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, trust you got something out of this night. Just believe you, you have because it's the Word of God, not because I teach it. Amen. But the Holy Ghost ministers to you through His action, through the Word of God. Amen. So I'm glad you joined us here tonight. 
Uh, you, as I say, you can always write us at our email address, office at fvc.org. And join us for church this coming Sunday. Uh, we're at New Life Family Church. The directions are on the website, fvc.org. There's a map there, and you can see how to get to church. We meet at 1230 after New Life dismisses their service. We come in and have our service for Faith and Victory Church at their facility, and we appreciate them sharing that facility with us till we get our new building, praise the Lord. So join us Sunday, and remember until then to fulfill the Word of God.